Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, look right here. Just when you thought 2020 couldn't get any more bizarre. Oh my gosh. The Pentagon declassifying three videos of what they're calling unexplained aerial phenomena. Look at that thing. It's rotating. Two videos showing objects spotted by Navy fighter pilots during training flights in 2015. Oh, God. And this one from 2004 showing an object about 40 feet long hovering about 50 feet above the water. Weird, right? Well, get this. The videos were previously leaked by a private company founded by Blink-182 rocker Tom DeLonge. The singer tweeting on Monday, the Pentagon just officially released my videos. Just saying. So why are they being released now? A spokesperson saying, after a thorough review, the department has determined that the authorized release of these unclassified videos does not reveal any sensitive capabilities or systems. DOD is releasing the videos in order to clear up any misconceptions by the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real. Harry Reid, former senator of Nevada, home to the infamous Area 51, tweeting, I'm glad the Pentagon is finally releasing this footage, but it only scratches the surface of research and materials available. But the DOD not offering much more info, saying the aerial phenomena observed in the videos remains characterized as unidentified. Retired Navy Commander David Fravor was piloting the jet in the 2004 video. And it's moving around left, right, forward, back. The radar immediately starts getting jammed. All of a sudden, it takes off. A mystery of galactic proportions. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. How do you explain a whole fleet of unidentified UAPs? Well... E.T. phone home. The Navy has acknowledged that the release of these newly declassified videos prompted the development of new guidelines for how pilots should report sightings of unauthorized or unidentified aircraft, which means it must be happening enough for them to need the guidelines. Crazy story, but the craziest part is Tom from Blink-182. <laughs> right? got whiplash so, from that transition. I a man of many interests and talents. Turn the <laughs> right. lights off. Oh my Carry gosh, it's me just George home. Jetson, guys. Take me out of here. <laughs> 2020 did not come in peace. <laughs> Could an alien deception be the strong delusion God sends on an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Recently, interest has been rising in the theory that an alien deception will be part of the end times. Odd as it may seem, this theory is entirely plausible from a Christian perspective. Although the Bible gives us no word about whether or not aliens exist, there is no inclusion of them in the creation account in Genesis, and no mention of them elsewhere. The Bible does tell us about visitors from another world, the spiritual world, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. According to a National Geographic survey, 77% of all Americans believe there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. According to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. That means that the number of Americans that believe that UFOs have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. With each passing year, the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increasing, as does the number of movies, television shows, and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being primed for something. Could this phenomenon be the strong delusion of the last days that is talked about in the Bible? 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-12 The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly, Just as they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions, and bring their fears on them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. The rapture is a familiar concept to most Christians and non-Christians alike. While they may not believe it, and they may even laugh at it, many non-Christians know that all the Christians believe that they are supposed to somehow disappear before the end of the world. Satan would seem to have a problem. 
How would he be able to explain away the fact that every person who was a Christian has suddenly disappeared? It would seem like a huge wake-up call to the world that the Christians were right after all. It is becoming more and more clear what Satan's solution to this dilemma is. He will answer this preposterous idea, the rapture, with another preposterous idea, an alien deception. When thinking of the peculiar things of the world, the New Age movement tends to come to mind. Psychics, mantras, astrology, and crystals are some of the symbols of this diverse group of the extremely spiritually deceived. Another topic that has always interested New Agers has been UFOs and extraterrestrials. In the past, the idea that UFOs were real was relegated to the fringe. In recent years, however, several scientists have come to the conclusion that extraterrestrials are statistically probable. One of the leading astrophysicists, Stephen Hawking, states that aliens are real and possibly dangerous. Christians must deal with this from a biblical worldview and not be caught up in the deception that UFOs are anything but agents of the Prince of the Power of the Air, aka Satan. God is very real, angels are very real, and the enemy is also very real. In an article by a former New Age participant, Jim Sales describes a prevailing belief among New Agers. Sales describes what Israeli psychic Yuri Geller said, extraterrestrials would not interfere until, in a single night, at the peak of the conflict, they would remove millions of humans who resist this initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness and re-educate them before returning them to Earth a few years later. Another article quotes Barbara Marciniak in her book Bringers of the Dawn as saying, The people who leave the planet during the time of Earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the Earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. Geller and Marciniak's quotes sound quite familiar to Christians. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 tells Christians they will disappear from the earth someday. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The source of this information in both cases, Yuri Geller and Barbara Masiniak, is described as being from psychic contact with extraterrestrials. This is not something New Agers have invented. It comes straight from the mind of Satan, disguised as an alien. This has been communicated to them, and will possibly be the explanation for the rapture of the church, i.e., those who do not fit into the earth anymore, those who resist the initiation into a higher spiritual consciousness, the troublemakers. Are you a troublemaker? I hope so.